Hi, welcome to the Picture This podcast. You can watch us on YouTube and get a little slideshow as you go, or you can listen to it on the go using your favorite podcasting app, Google Play or Apple's podcasting app, whatever works for you. This week we're talking about, uh, are you a pro photographer? What does that mean? And is your gear pro or can a camera be pro? All right, this seems sneaky, but I promise this is actually kind of a complicated question and it comes up quite often. So all the time before we answer this, I just have to say that this episode is brought to you by the great courses. Plus the great courses plus is a subscription on demand video learning service with top notch lectures and courses from top professors and experts from places like national geographic, the Smithsonian and the culinary Institute of America. You can go to the great courses plus.com slash Tony and get a free trial. Yeah, they have great educational content about photography and just about anything. Uh, new sponsor, so thanks for sponsoring us. We'll talk about them a little bit more coming up. But first, what is it that defines whether somebody's professional or not? Yeah, this comes up a lot because being pro is kind of important in the photography community. Like People throw it around. Are you pro? You're not a pro. Am I pro? People have asked. Can I call myself a pro? Those are questions that we get. And there are various definitions all around the internet. Um, Some people say you have to get 100% of your income from photography. I can poke some holes in that. Other people feel like as long as you're getting paid for pictures or to take pictures, you're pro. Doesn't matter if it's 100%. And then I'm like, what? What if you only do it once a year? I hear people buying a big camera like this Nikon D5 because they want to look pro. And so feel apparently, pro. and feel pro. And I see people online debating, saying, oh, this and this person is not a pro. Look at this picture. And then they'll point to some picture that they don't like. Or look at their camera. Right. They're using micro four thirds. They can't possibly be a pro. Yeah. I know <laughs> you guys have totally been in a pro argument before. It happens all the time. It seems like it's just a word, but it is such a big point of the debate. Yeah, there's a lot of feeling behind that word. Um, So the 100% of their income debate, I have a real problem with that because a lot of professional photographers that are respected in the field, they've been shooting magazines for 20 years. They also have speaking engagements, you know, uh, sponsorship deals. Yeah, I think the metric is you're not a pro unless you make a hundred percent of your income Yeah, from photography, right? Like yeah. from taking pictures. Yeah. yeah. But I think a lot of photographers are making money from other things and also have other interests. And that doesn't Especially make, nowadays, right? Yeah. That doesn't make them <laughs> any scrambling. less of a pro. And then that also you could say, okay, obviously Chelsea, they don't mean you're a pro and then you go be above and beyond to do something else. But what about people that 100% of their income is from, photography, but they only make five grand a year. It's just, yeah, doesn't uh, make sense. What if they only work a couple of hours a week? Um, or what if you're like our friend Erky and you could actually live off of your photography and you're a professional wedding photographer, but you also work like 50 hours a week at an office job like he does. Yeah, he's a madman. Erky he just takes lots of coffee and works 90 hours a week. He has like endless <laughs> energy. He just has two full-time jobs. He's a pro photographer, but also has another full-time job with benefits and. Yeah. You know. So this metric seems silly because you could be making 35 K a year and have that be your only photography income um, and be a pro, or you could be making hundred K a year as a photographer, but you have another job where you make 150 K a year and therefore you wouldn't qualify as a pro photographer, even though you're making more yeah. than the pro photographer at photography, it gets to be a really confusing metric. Yeah. And if you're going, if you're a photographer and you're going to trade shows, I've seen on the forms before, they'll say like, what percentage of your income comes from photography or what percentage of the time is your work photography, something like that. And I'm like, oh, I don't even know how they use that one. Yeah. Um, this is one that I kind of embrace. And it's, if you're being paid at that point, you're a professional. I thought that too, until I started researching this podcast. And then I was like, oh, this is way more complicated than that. Because there can be someone working towards being a professional, doing professional quality work with intentions of it being sold. 
and they wouldn't technically be considered a pro at the time. Right. So at some point, Ansel Adams was, say, 17 years old, and he'd never sold a print or a calendar, but he was putting in months and months of work to get some beautiful landscape because that's what he wanted to do. And then it was a, it took him a couple of years between taking these pictures to the point where he actually sold something and made some money off of it. So was he a pro at the instant cash changed hands? Or was he actually a pro when he was taking that picture that would eventually be sold? Do you think like the check cleared and he was like, put on his name tag, pro photographer. Yeah, and <laughs> but could he, would he retroactively become a pro at the point when he was shooting the pictures? Tony, I don't know. I, I think you can retroactively become professional. And at that point, retroactively. it becomes more about the intention. <laughs> and we'll talk about that in a second. I also wonder if you're a pro, are you always a pro? Like if you write a book, you're always an author. If you get a PhD, you're always a doctor. But if you're a pro photographer, do you not do you become not a pro photographer at some point? If you're no longer, if some t period of time has lapsed between since you last sold a picture, are you still a pro, or is it a title that you keep? I don't know, but sometimes I'm a pro and sometimes I'm not. Because sometimes I'm taking a picture for a client or doing it for work, and sometimes I'm just taking pictures. It's nonsense. It's I'm not doing it in a professional way. I'm not doing it with professional intentions. It's just for me. It's amateur. So maybe maybe you can be a pro and not be a pro. I, I have this internal debate sometimes because we'll be, let's say we're just out on vacation with the kid and we have a big camera. I, I've had people come up and say, hey, are you a pro photographer? And I'll think, uh, not right yes, now. but no. Like sometimes it's a security guard and you're not allowed to take pro photographers. This is one of those times when that kind of arbitrary line comes yeah. up. Like they don't allow professional photo photo photographs in concerts, for example. But you oh, could take yeah. casual photogra photographs. And so it seems like if you're a pro, you can't be there. But if you're an amateur, so at those points, I would say, no, I'm just an amateur photographer. Because in that moment, I'm not trying to take professional pictures. But that would indicate that professional is not something you are, but something you do. do. It's a state it's that changes. I think it's something you do, but then it gets more complicated than that. Because when you say you're a pro photographer, people also think it insinuates your pictures are really good. And you can right. be take, making money taking pictures and your pictures can be, well, it's subjective, but they can be not so good. You could be not at it for very long. You could have very basic problems in all of your pictures. So what does it mean? Um, that's a good point, because I've talked to photographers who are very humble, and they will be working as a portrait photographer, but they wouldn't describe themselves as pro. They'll be like, whoa, I just started a few months ago. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, I'm just a portrait no, I photographer. No, I hardly know what the camera settings are. But they're making a living at photography. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So we talked about this a little bit, but maybe it's the intention that you have when you're taking a picture. Because, um, for example, when you shoot micro stock photography, you can make a living as a micro stock photographer. You take pictures of people smiling and eating salad, and then you upload you it, do. and then you hope. That's all I do. At some point, some designer, some advertiser wants to use your picture to sell uh, health food or salads or something. At that point, you would make money. So when you're taking those stock photography pictures, to me, I feel like you're a pro at that point. Even though nobody is paying you, you have the intention to be paid. And it's the thought process because you're thinking about serving somebody else. And to me, that's what a professional does. They're striving to meet somebody else's needs. An amateur is more interested in self-gratification. They're doing photography in a way that they enjoy. Yeah. In a way that being an amateur is far more noble. It's a pursuit of art rather than a pursuit of money. The professional has the intention of making money. Yeah, but then say these lines get blurred again because a lot of gallery photographers, they're shooting for themselves, but it also becomes marketable. Gets 
gets a little confusing. Or they're shooting, doing what they like, and they get hired to do it. Like, oh, who was it? I want to say Mary Ellen Mark, or um, it was a street photographer who was just interested in the streets of New York and was taking those pictures and caught someone's eye, and then it became their niche. They were in magazines. Their photos were in magazines. So it's like, it's still pretty hard to, to define. It seems pretty upfront and easy. Right. Um, then you have someone like Richard Avedon, who everyone just knows. He's one of the most famous photographers ever. And he started off taking ID photos for Merchant Marines. Yeah. So was he a pro then? Was he? Yeah, are you taking probably a pro not his most satisfying photos? work? But he was getting paid to take pictures, and I'm sure that that meant something to him. That was his first stepping stone, you know. Yeah, uh, I feel like most people would. I haven't seen the pictures. Maybe they were really great. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like most people at that point in the debate would say no. It requires some kind of skill because if you go to AAA and get your passport picture taken, is that person? A professional photographer. I mean, is I mean, that what they do all day? It's uh, it can be a lot of it. What if you take portraits for families and you just have it in all automatic mode all of the time? Take the picture, never think of composition. Put it on your computer, like use some preset that somebody else made, and then sell it. Is that really much different? I remember when I got my picture taken at the the AAA. They went out of their way to improve the lighting and they had to adjust some camera settings and they made sure they got a decent picture. Like they worked on my pose and expression and stuff. They actually took a little I bit of pride in their ID photo. Triple A picture. I imagine you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like an eighties glamor shot. There's like a little face floating <laughs> in the boa. corner. Yeah. Like Olin Mill style. Dang. You got the really good treatment. When I go, I'm like mid smile. My tooth is all snaggled up. They're like, this is fine. I mean, it's good. <laughs> Um, maybe it's about your experience level because we hear this a lot. No, I'm fighting this one because I get people all the time that say, I've been shooting since it was ASA and all the time, 40 billion years I've been doing photography, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean you're better than anyone else or that you absorb more information. It just means you're old. <laughs> oh, oh, like that's pretty mean, Tony. You can say it. You have the gray hair. Yeah. But I mean, they're definitely people. We, we get young kids all of the time and they've only been shooting for a year. And we're like, dang, man, you're better than like people that have been shooting for 20 years. So I don't think that really has much to do with it either. I guess experience can help. There are things you learn with experience. If you're a wedding photographer, you definitely get the routine down. You know, if you're a fashion photographer, there's a lot to learn there, too. You know, about the negotiations involved in the posing and which models you prefer and things like that. And you get your style, but not necessarily. It doesn't necessarily matter. It's not all or nothing, I don't think. Yeah, experience definitely counts. And I think it, it can even factor into the definition of a pro, because are you a pro on your very first wedding? Um, you're certainly a pro after 10 years of shooting weddings. Yeah. Yeah. Sometime I think it does matter, but there are definitely people that think they're pro just because they've been shooting a long time. Um, some people say, oh, I've been shooting weddings for 10 years, but then it's like, how many have you shot? Oh, three. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, over 10 years. You know, it took me a while. Uh, maybe it's about the quality of the pictures. This seems to be what everybody thinks in DP review and other sites. Well, I think this is why it gets really difficult to define for people. And I think that this is what comes to mind when people think of a pro. They want you to be someone that they look up to. They want your pictures to inspire awe. You know, I think that's pretty a pretty important part of it. Yeah, and I think to many people, the term pro doesn't have anything to do with making money, even though it means profession, but they think of it as being skill, skill level. level like they they will even say this picture is pro yeah even if it wasn't being sold it's it's a, like a ranking like the top tier <laughs> whereas if you said this picture is amateur that would clearly be an insult right yeah it has some mul has multiple meanings for sure even though i wish people would embrace the word amateur because it's somebody who does it for passion and love and can... they're actually losing money <laughs> just to like, do it oh this is advanced amateur i'm really liking <laughs> yeah um 
I will say you kind of know it when you see it. It's one of those things that's definitely subjective, but you know a professional looking photo when you see it. You think, oh yeah, this could be in a magazine right away. There's no questioning it. I don't see any obvious flaws. It's beautiful. It's engaging. This was taken by a professional. But if it's in a magazine, and let's say it's an advertisement or a cover, isn't it by definition professional? Because some magazine editor decided to lay it and lay, lay it out and burn some money on ink and paper, yeah, distribute it to people. It seems like no matter what the quality of the picture is, it's by definition a professional picture. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. You know what always gets me is you'll see like for those free calendars yeah. that appear in different places. Like sometimes your bank will send them out. Yeah. And those pictures can be terrible. <laughs> yeah, but it's like sometimes they just cringe. It's I'm like, like oh, Deborah God. from accounting or something. Yeah. It, I don't know. <laughs> oh, speaking from of Deborah and accounting, you ever see the pictures in your doctor's office? It seems like most doctors are photographers as a hobby, <laughs> and so they always decorate the doctor's no, office. No, hey, Tony, don't. It's pictures. our audience. They're all watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and and what about the gear? Uh, is if you get yourself a $6,000 camera, it's called a professional camera, but are you a professional at that point? Definitely. It's like, yeah, you just need, you can just buy your way into professional. It just goes by how many pounds <laughs> of camera you have. Yeah. And when you hit I think a certain hit limit. Okay. We can just end the discussion at this point. How much does your camera weigh? Uh, three pounds and over and you're good. And below that you're an amateur. <laughs> just get out. Yeah. So we pretty much just hit the get right out of here. <laughs> okay. Um, I will say if you want to take pictures at a concert, they often have a metric that your camera has to be under a certain size. Like the lens has to be under three inches. That's one I remember from a particular venue. Yeah. And I was so excited because I dug through my camera collection. And I realized I could bring in my Olympus EM5 Mark II and like a 75 millimeter uh, F17 or something like, like, hey. like a portrait lens. They didn't know they were dealing with a total geek. Yeah, but I was able to get like crisp, clear like professional shots, even though I managed to meet their requirements but you for were not amateur having a pro that gear. night, as I recall. That's true. There was obviously, obviously no way I could sell a picture like that because I did not have any sort of right to it. <laughs> but according to every concert venue, gear can be professional or not, and it is measured based on the size. Um, yeah, but I also think that um, gear is professional because it has to be used in a specific way. Like when a photographer rents a medium format camera, it's because they know it's going to be a huge print. Maybe they know they're shooting a billboard. And then, you know, that, that kind of makes the gear pro. Yeah. Because it, it's catering towards a professional use. Right. For, for amateur purposes, that probably wouldn't be a good choice. It would be a clumsy camera to use. But a pro actually needs those traits that it offers. And like the D5 or the Canon 1DX, are good examples of that because they are huge and bulky, but they're weather sealed. And many types of pros will often find themselves in rainy conditions where an amateur would be like, this is no longer fun. It's cold and rainy. I'm going to go inside, have <laughs> some coffee. But the pro is getting paid and their career depends on it and they have to stick it out even though it sucks. And so the pro camera is there for them. And by the very definition of the word pro, it's designed for that purpose. Um, but if you pick up and a, a, a Canon T3, which is not weather sealed, you could definitely take and sell a picture with it. It's just that the camera hasn't been designed for kind of the specific needs of the pro. So there is a division between the needs of the casual photographer, the amateur photographer, and those who actually have money relying on it. Yeah. Another thing to me is the dual memory card slots. Because if you're a wedding photographer, I memory know. cards can fail. People sometimes. argue with us on this because they've never had their memory card fail. But if it happens to you, it's happened to me. You're going to be really sad. Yeah. So you I can't know lose your work. I know pros will use cameras that don't have dual memory card slots all the time. But to me, I wouldn't because it's so scary that, you know, tens of thousands of dollars can go into one single shoot and your gear only costs a couple of grand probably. So a shoot might be worth more than all your gear. And certainly worth more than that $30 memory card that might fail in your camera and leave you with nothing to show for the whole shoot. It's, it's 
too scary. So you should for, write photography based horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so to me, gear can definitely be professional or intended for amateurs. And I do believe most amateurs should buy amateur cameras because they can be lighter, they can be cheaper, they can even be better, but they more fun so to cool use. But they cool with the big stuff. <laughs> That's true, they do. Uh, <laughs> So I think pros should buy pro cameras mostly, and amateurs should buy mo amateur cameras mostly, but then there's crossover for that too. Let's talk about our sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. Okay, first of all, I have to say, I'm glad they approached us because I was using The Great Courses anyway, Right. watching some uh, physics videos. Neil deGrasse science. Tyson. Yeah, yep, yeah he has on. a couple of great courses on there. If you're nerdy and into science stuff like us. Yeah. Um, but I also was watching a photography video. It was called Raising Awareness. And uh, it was about using your photography to raise awareness of issues in the world, which we're volunteering in Thailand soon. We're going to a school there. And I was thinking about how to capture it. And so I was really glad that I found this video by Joel Sartor. Um, he shot for National Geographic. He shot for Audubon. He shot for a bunch of people. And it was really cool to look at his shots and have him tell the stories and talk about the skills he had to have to take those pictures. So if you go to The Great Courses Plus and you watch some of these photography videos, there are a bunch of photography videos. This is in the National Geographic Masters of Photography series you can just you get to talk to real photographers that you would might not have access to somewhere else because they kind of chase them down and you get to learn the stories behind their pictures and you get to learn from their experiences so i found that really inspiring yeah i watched a national geographic masters of photography course with corey richards who yeah. worked with a team climbing a mountain and he just talked about the challenges documenting it and telling that story and composing pictures that included all the elements that the viewer in a different context would need to kind of empathize and feel that struggle of being on a freezing cold mountain with super thin air and it's like these are like lectures like real in-depth discussions that that it's information you can't get anywhere else from masters that aren't on any sort of uh, like they're not good at social research. media necessarily, yeah. but they're masters but they're of masters their trade. At their trade, yeah. And there's so many hours of footage; it can do a lot to improve. You know, what actually, I thought was really funny. Um, Joel, he was talking about how his daughter introduced him to Instagram. Speaking of pros versus amateur, and so he started using Instagram and. He was like bad at it at first. He accidentally took a picture and posted it, and everyone kind of made fun of him. But um, he started getting hired by National Geographic to tell stories on Instagram specifically. And I find this funny relating to our topic today because a lot of our viewers and people we see in forums will say, Instagram photographers, like kids now are using their cell phones and it's BS and they don't know real photography. But we, here we have like a master of photography who's traveled the world taking pictures for National Geographic and he's taking pictures with his phone for National Geographic and putting them, them on Instagram. I think it's about telling your story and, and reaching your viewer, and it's not necessarily about the gear. I just found that really interesting. Yeah, and uh, Justin, you, you watched The Great Courses Plus series too, right? What did you watch? Um, I watched the Inexplicable, Inexplicable Universe, the, I believe it's the same series that Chelsea watched. Oh yeah, that's I the same one it. I watched. Oh, with Neil deGrasse Tyson. With Neil deGrasse Tyson, yeah. He's like yeah. man, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's so cool. He yeah, also he goes can... into like organic chemistry and, and dark matter and that kind of stuff too. It's all I was, fascinating. I was gonna say, he finally made me understand dark matter. <laughs> which is important, it's like most of the universe, but most people don't understand it and they, he explains it in a way that you can actually understand and you don't have to go digging through YouTube videos. It's just a more efficient, better way to fill your brain with good information. Yeah, if you want to check out The Great Courses Plus, you can go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash Tony, and they give you a one month trial. Um, and otherwise it starts as low as $14.99 per month. But in that time you can watch some videos. They have like access to a huge library of like 7,000 videos on any topic. Wine is one of them. They had one on chess, which we play, so I'm gonna watch that one and then beat Tony. Um, cooking, I cooking, cook and eat both. I do both those things as well. I know we have so much in common. 
Okay, check it out.、Uh, we'll get on with our discussion of what makes a pro photographer. You had a funny story about the Sears portrait photographer. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to go through a few different professions and discuss whether or not they were pros or not. I, I had a friend who got hired as a Sears portrait photographer back when this existed. Are you doing a game right now, like pro or no? Pro or no?、Okay. With Tony Northrop. Help me decide. So she got <laughs> hired. She has a job. So that's okay. One point for pro. Okay. And they gave her like、mm, less than an hour of training. She didn't really know how to use、one、a camera. One point for no. They yeah. They brought her in. They basically told her nothing about the camera except where the shutter button was. They said, "Don't move it. The lights are all set up. Don't move them. Have people sit here."、Um, Tell them to look at the stuffed parrot. There was like a parrot on top of the camera. It was real. <laughs> and then when people are smiling, you push the button. And then all the rest of her training went into getting them to buy prints. So is she a pro photographer? At that point, she did not know how to use what aperture was or what shutter speed was. She didn't know what. Uh, a PC sync cable would be, or how the flashes were working, or the difference between a beauty dish and a soft box. She was using them, but is she a pro? Yes. Okay. What do you think? <laughs>、uh, yeah, I would definitely call her a I mean, pro because I don't think of the word pro as insinuating skill or quality. We're not glamorizing it. Yeah, it's like very technically. Yeah, most people I think do. I think if you're a pro, they expect you to produce pro results. And I, I've known a lot of pro photographers in my days, and I've seen a lot of paid pictures that I thought were of appalling quality. <laughs> and so for me,、wow. I'm okay with somebody being a pro but not being skilled, experienced, or producing good quality pictures. I think that's fine. For me, it's like all about making just... money or not. Within the definition, no, not ethically. I'm just saying you can be <laughs> unskilled and yet still be professional. I think it's ridiculous that we associate lots of professionals are terrible what they do, right? In other professions, there are terrible lawyers out there. They're still have you met my、lawyer. doctor? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Poor doctor. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> of all the people to insult, <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna kill me.、Uh, okay, introduce a little more skill here. What about that guy who takes your picture when you're? Like getting on the cruise ship, but aren't they? Don't you think they start as photographers, or do you think that they just like made that little towel animal in your room and then went and grabbed a camera? I I think the cruise line has a photographer, yeah, who picks a backdrop, a background. You know, it has like palm trees or something, and picks a flash and picks a camera and tells them to point and shoot, and then and that's it. But those、they、cruise photographers. Yes, they do a little bit more. They have to deal with different like this, lighting like this, conditions. This is a pose. You're so、Am、pro, Chelsea. Am I、Chelsea. a pro? <laughs>、uh, so again, I I would consider the cruise photographers pro, pro photographers. We think everyone's a pro. That's what that's the. Okay,、conclusion. well, this will push your definition. You know, when you ride a roller coaster <laughs> and on the big drop, your arms are in the air and that machine. Fires a flash. You're and asking your me if a robot is a pro photographer. <laughs> yes, it is it because those pictures are expensive. They're way too it expensive. It did go to to art school. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> it is using a D5 up there. <laughs> I'm all right. You've gone too far for me. A roller coaster is not a pro photographer. <laughs> Crazy. What is in that cup? Just tea. Why not? They're making money. There's somebody. <laughs> I will say there's somebody who set the、it? camera up. And it was pretty much automated, but somebody did pick the camera, place the flash, and designed a system to help them sell prints. So maybe the person who set it up is the pro. Maybe not the people actually working the checkout desk who are trying to get you to buy the gift package with one eight by ten and three wallet size. Maybe they're not pro. Maybe they're just salespeople. This is crazy talk. What if someone owns a store and they put up a security camera? Do you think they're a pro? You just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> We talked about this a little bit. What about all、oh, these Instagram photographers? Instagrammers are pro. They're、and、making six figures. So many of them. They,、uh, there's this one girl, and I follow her now, and she has a whole white room, white floor, white walls, white little swing, white books, and she just like sits in front of it with tea in a white cup, and she looks beautiful, and she's styled beautifully, and it's a nice picture. 
And then she plugs like her shirt, like, thank you, so-and-so for the shirt. You can get yours here. And she's uh, a fashion photographer at that point. And uh, like making the set, she's a commercial photographer, but on Instagram, definitely. Even if she's using a smartphone? Oh, yeah, definitely. Even if she's her own model? What about um, Terry, her own model? Yeah, all of the greats t took self-portraits. But what about Terry Richardson? He used that, what was that little, like a Yashica, but it was just like a point and shoot. He yeah, a little 35 millimeter did it. point and shoot camera. He did it. Uh, right. I would, nobody's going to like this argument. Why? I would call... Kim Kardashian, a pro photographer. Oh my gosh, why'd you have to go there? Because so much of who she is and how we know her and how she makes money are the pictures she takes of herself. And they're very, very carefully Wait, composed and posed. does she take them posed. of herself? Because I've heard some of these celebrities actually have professional photographers taking the pictures for them. I just blew your mind. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So she's taking fake selfies, pictures that look like selfies, but somebody else is, is well, the selfies composing are probably it and hers, such. But I've, that's, I don't know if it's about her specifically, but a lot of them um, have photographers taking them or they have their own retoucher and they send their pictures to a retoucher and they like make it look more professional. That certainly sounds pro. If you're a photographer and you hire retouchers for your photos, and then your living is based on you what? publishing these photos and people liking the photos. That seems like a pro photographer. What even is our profession anymore? It, it's becoming really strange. It used to be so straightforward. It used to be pro photographers, the guy who shoots your weddings and he's the guy who shoots your kid's senior portrait. That is the pro photographer. Oh, and the photojournalist who works for your newspaper. And you just had a couple of pro photographer jobs. The yeah. guy doing National Geographic photography. Everybody else was amateur. But now the lines are blurred. So yeah. many people can become kind of pros, part-time pros. People don't just have one career anymore. We have lots of little careers. We dedicate 10 hours a week to one job, 20 hours a week to another job. It's a crazy world. It's blurred lines. Um, what about fine art photographers? What about them? What if they're taking pictures? Because it, it takes decades to build up a portfolio of a couple dozen pictures and if you're going to fill out if you're going to have a gallery you need a couple dozen great pictures but you're not going to do that day one no and actually some of them get backed by institutions to pay them to do their personal projects they'll be like i'm taking pictures of fruit in the city and then like the guggenheim will be like we have money to let you do that. Yeah. And then they get paid to just go take these pictures and who knows if they'll ever really make money other than the scholarship opportunity. That's how a lot of pros get started with various scholarships. Yeah. Um, right. Some of them are also self-funded. I've known fine art photographers who were uh, working as a waiter or a waitress, um, yet put their spare time into, you know, buying an old film Hasselblad and scheduling uh, shoots with models and and they're like, yeah, you know, I only have four pictures in my portfolio now. I'm still building it out. But at some point, you know, they were making contacts with gallery owners. At some point, they were going to get enough pictures that they'd be able to put it together and sell it. Yeah. So are they a pro now or are they going to be a pro? I think they count as pro. I know specifically a girl who gets paid by a gallery. They have like a, a live-in artist and they just pay her living expenses so she can produce art, which is photography. And then she shows her art in galleries. And I don't know, you know, I don't know the details of how much money she makes and stuff, but um, I don't think she's like struck it rich yet. She's extremely talented. Her work is insane. She makes it into all sorts of uh, photo magazines and art magazines and gets interviewed and stuff. And um, she's a professional photographer that just isn't making a ton of money from selling prints yet, as far as I know. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I, I like the intention definition of pro. And so to me, that person who's building out the portfolio, even so if there's some really delusional people that could also probably ruin that description. It's just so hard to pin down it's like all these little things. And it's so nuanced. And everyone yeah, start, we're going to hear a lot of your opinions in the comments. And I welcome that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Where it always comes in is these like glamour photographers. They'll be on Model Mayhem and they're just like 
they'll just hire some girl and they're actually paying and the girl will pose and they'll take pictures and they always kind of refer to themselves as pro. Yeah. Even though there's nobody on the planet who's going to buy pictures of some chick in your town. <laughs> like what would you, how could you ever make money from that? So to me, they seem to want to call themselves pro and they buy all the pro gear, even pro lighting stuff. And maybe they even go through part of the professional process, but then there's no possibility of them ever making money Is as near like as I can tell. Pro? Faux pro. I like that term. I regret putting that term out there now. <laughs> to, to me, it's almost like they're role playing a professional photographer. Yeah, like yeah. they're pretending to be a fashion photographer or a photographer for Maxim or something. Like they just are living out the dream. That's cool too, though. Like playing a racing game on fun. the Xbox. Yeah, I think it's okay. I just wouldn't, if I played a racing game on the Xbox, I wouldn't consider myself a pro race car driver. <laughs> I would really hope that would be awkward. No, yeah, I think you have business cards made up. Nobody like, would let me get away with that. Xbox. <laughs> okay, and then education and training. I know a lot of people that think you have to have a degree to be a pro, which a lot of uh, pros that you know probably started that way, some of them. What do you think? Do you have to have a college degree or work under the masters or oh, pay man. your dues? I, I've known a lot of people with new photography degrees who were not good photographers hey. and could not make a living at photography. So I say no. I say no too. Uh, Nigel Barker, we did an interview with him. You can see that on our YouTube channel. Definitely a pro photographer. Definitely a pro photographer, but he had a really cool story. He was a model first and Avedon took pictures of him and he just like took notes on the lighting. He was interested in photography. He was like, all right, all right, I see where he put this and this and how I'm posed. And then he'd go home and he'd try to set it up at home and recreate stuff. So he kind of had a cool education, but not really in the traditional sense. But he made it work. He's really talented. Uh, I wanted to bring up Brandon Stanton, who's the author of Humans of New York. And if you haven't seen this book, you should look it up. It's gorgeous. We, we have a copy. He's uh, basically like a modern era of street photographer who yeah. was not shooting candid so much as he takes pictures of humans in New York and but also gets a little bit of their story. Yeah, he lets them tell whatever story they'd like to tell. Um, and I've never seen I could not find any reference to Brandon or referring to himself as a pro photographer or anybody else referring to him as a pro photographer. They refer to him as like an author and photographer. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely consider him a pro because his book has been best selling for like five years now. <laughs> I know because it's listed in the same chart as our books, <laughs> but Can it's always outselling them. Uh, and uh, his pictures, they're, they're street photography, so he's not bringing in studio lights and stuff. But many of the pictures are great pictures. Nonetheless, even though it's not, it's it's part of his job, like part of his job is interviewing the people part of his job is writing part of his job is dealing with the publishers and stuff part of it is photography part of it is working the camera i would consider him a professional photographer Definitely. but i'm not sure any every, everybody else would oh i think so i think so all right so did you come to a conclusion do you feel like you haven't nailed down or you could give a concise answer uh i'm i I'm going to say you're a pro photographer if your intention is to make money from the pictures that you're taking. If you're shooting with somebody else's needs in mind mm. in order to get some money out of them, you're a pro. It doesn't matter about your skill level. I want to take skill level and quality of images out of the definition because I want there to be skilled amateurs who are doing it for the love of the art and not to make money. And I want to differentiate that. What about you? What do you think? Oh, man. You want to take skill level out of it? Yeah, I want it to be okay to have fresh, unskilled people working as professionals and highly skilled people doing it for love who are amateurs. Get rid of that stigma from the word amateur. I guess that makes sense. I mean, if... If you're booking clients regularly and that's your full-time job, doesn't really matter if your pictures are really great. I guess that I guess I'll be content with your definition. <laughs> okay, it's, it's also the only way to avoid arguments because if you make it about skill level, that's subjective, and people get into fights online about whether somebody is taking pro pictures or not. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough. I'm not going to try to sum it up. I'm just going to go with what you said. <laughs> 
Okay. I'm still too conflicted. There's too many variables. We we just didn't. After all that research, we still can't feel comfortable with the definition of pro. I guess. <laughs> Let's say thank you to our sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. They have, seems like hundreds of hours of well-organized, ad-free educational material on just about every topic you can imagine, including photography from the masters of photography from places like National Geographic, as well as everything from cooking to fine art and wine, yoga is in there yeah if you can imagine a great courses plus probably has some material for you but you don't have to guess you can get a, a one month free trial 30 yes, day free yeah. trial go to the great courses plus.com slash tony get that trial let them know that you heard about it from us and maybe they'll keep sponsoring this podcast yeah and you can click on the link in the description below as well Right, because clicking is easier than typing. Really good. <laughs> Thanks, and uh, be sure to go into your podcasting app, search for Picture This. This was a picture of this podcast. You don't have to watch it on YouTube. You can listen to it while you drive or exercise or something. And I want to know what you think. I like to hear people's ideas. Are you a pro? Do you feel more or less pro after this? Do you feel like we missed something? Let us know in the comments. That'd be fun. <laughs> like, Bye, share, subscribe. Bye. Thanks. 